Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now today is Friday. Praise God. I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Listen, everything I've been sharing with you, try and listen to it again and again. It's so important. Praise God. Very, very important. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready to call for the daily bread? Now, on Fridays, you know what we do? We call for daily bread for the whole weekend. Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. And I receive what will last me till Monday. In the name of Jesus Christ, I refuse to lack because I'm a child of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. And Lord, I ask for understanding to everyone watching and listening to me right now. Let your wisdom speak in their hearts and establish your word and your kingdom in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, yesterday I was sharing with something with you. I was telling you that Jesus, because you need to understand this. We're talking about the wisdom of God's word. So Jesus was the word of God. And so I told you how Melchizedek came in the flesh. He was the word of God. He existed as the word of God. But then he appeared on earth like a human being. And in this case, he presented himself as one who was a king. Okay. Now, not only a king, also a priest. So he performed some, some two roles in that one visit. He came and he blessed Abraham, right? Now, as priest, he received tithe from Abraham. Yes, Abraham gave him tithe of all. So as a priest, he received tithe from Abraham. And then he blessed Abraham. And then there's another thing significant that he did. He came with bread and wine. So that's the reason why the Titan covenant is the covenant of sustenance. In that one meeting, Melchizedek came to share with Abraham how God wants to sustain him. And by reason of that, they cut a covenant that day. Now that's what Titan is about covenant of sustenance covenant of sustenance so melchizedek was the word of god made flesh now in the same way god had planned for jesus to come he's original assignment was to come and give man life you remember in the garden of eden now we are going into some real stuff that will make you study the bible and it's good for you you know when god made man in genesis chapter one he had said in the he had said in, in chapter 26 genesis 1 26 right it says, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness and let him have dominion over um, everything that we have created. Okay, so God said, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Now that's in Genesis chapter one. And if you've not heard me say this before, hear it, you know, to some I'm repeating it. When God, what, what God did in Genesis chapter one was to speak. He didn't touch one pin. Some people don't know the, the, the difference between Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. Some people think, oh, why is, he, why is he telling us again what he already told us in Genesis chapter 1? No, it's not the same thing. When you read chapter 2 and verse 4, you will see the difference. See, in chapter 1, God was creating. Now in chapter 2 from verse 4, it tells us, now these are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Wait. Um, when they were created in the day that the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. Now, that's the first introduction of the word Lord God. Previously, you only see God and God and God. Now, when you 
when you when you just see it like that in the text you just go okay what's it saying i'll tell you what it's saying in genesis chapter one it was god the father that's the the one we called um oh, i'm trying to remember this name now um the most high there's a word there's a word for it there's a the Greek word now for it. I'm trying to remember. I, I don't want to make a mistake, so let's leave that out. Now, um, the Most High. That's the one we call the Father. See, He was the one creating in chapter 1. And all He was doing was to speak. He, like I said, He did not lift a pin. Now, when we come to chapter 2 of Genesis, there is another one. Yet, they are one. There is another one that began to do his work. And to put it very clear to you, that's the Holy Spirit. So when the father finished his work of speaking in chapter 1, he rested. On the seventh day, he rested. When he rested, everywhere was still dark. Nothing was formed physically. So in verse 4, chapter 2 of Genesis, he is telling us that the creation of the earth did not take six days. It took generations. So God didn't just say, let the earth bring forth trees. <laughs> trees just grew up in the next few seconds. No, sir. When God, when, 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 when the Lord God took over, he was the one that created seeds in the ground. Those seeds were planted. Those seeds germinated. They brought out their sprout. They grew up. They became trees before they began to bear fruit. So it took years. So Adam was not created on the literal sixth day. Are you following what I'm saying? No, he wasn't. Praise God. He was created years after trees, everything had grown. The water parts have been laid. Things have been set up. Garden has been um, 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 formed. Then man was created. And now I, I was talking about man. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. That's in chapter 1. So God spoke it out. But then when the Holy Ghost was forming man, he did not form man in the image and likeness of God. He formed man from the dust of the ground. Remember, man is a spirit. God is a spirit. Man was not a spirit. I know people have said man is a spirit, lives in his soul. Understand this, please and please understand this. Man, Adam was not a spirit being. Adam was a living soul and there's a big difference. They are not the same thing. A soul and a spirit, they are not the same. Oh, maybe the youth. No, it's not the youth. It doesn't talk about the youth. The, the, the spirit man comes from God. Are you following now, but when God made man, when the Holy Ghost made man, he didn't make man a spirit being. He made man a living soul. So he got, the, he got the earth, formed him from the dust of the ground, and then he breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, having become a living soul, he began to train man. So the instructions he gave to man. If you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Now, when he says you will surely die, he didn't mean you fall down and die. Because in the creation of man, man was supposed to live forever. Now, man was still in the incubation state. The way Adam was, he didn't have the capacity to live forever as this. Now, I call this a buyer. <laughs> so he was given an instruction. Say, look, you shall not eat of this tree. The day you eat of this tree, dying, you will die. And that's actually the real, <laughs> the real translation. The day you eat of this tree, dying, you will die. So you will come under the region. You will come under the authority of death because of your disobedience. Now that's because I, in the brother, because me. You see, permit me to say this. We learn by experience, right? When, when, when something bad happens, you look at it, study it, 
And then you now say, okay, if I'm proceeding, I, I would like to be sure that this doesn't reoccur. So what measures do I put in place? Okay, I put step one protection, step two protection. They do this with machines. They do this with cars, airplanes, and, and even human, human beings. When someone hurts you, you want to study why, why did this hurt get to be so much? And then you, need, you want to protect yourself later in the future. You understand? So you don't get hurt that way again. So that's just the thing about life. Now, Lucifer was a spirit being. And because Lucifer was a spirit being, in fact, Lucifer, I call here, can you receive this? Lucifer was a being that had eternal life. Lucifer had the life of God. So, you know, someone goes, why can't God just kill Satan and everything will just end? He can't. No, don't say he can't. He can't. I call me Nesabia. He can't. Why? Because Lucifer has eternal life. See? So, for God to expel Lucifer, it took the counsel of heaven to judge and to come to that decision. So he was given, he was given limited access. And that's what happened. And even in the end, he's still not going to be destroyed. He's just going to be imprisoned because you can't destroy a thing that has eternal life. God knows this, or he knew this. So in the making of man, he now created this precaution. Let's make him a living soul first. Now, Jesus, Ali Brano, Humble Jesus is the one that was ordained to come and give him life. Now, you see the Bible in the Garden of Eden said, there's this tree of life that God created. And even the tree, God said they should not eat. He didn't really say they should not eat it at all. He, what God actually said to them was, you will not eat that tree except by my permission. That's what God said. That's the literal thing God said to Adam. You see this tree? Of every tree in the garden, you may free... Now, the King James Bible tells in Genesis, that you may freely eat. Note that word, freely eat. Freely eat. So, the difference with this tree and every other tree is the word freely. This particular one, you are not free to eat it. But then, remember, it, is, it was a tree. It wasn't a poisonous tree. It was a tree that was a normal tree, normal fruit. That's, now, that's what Eve's eyes were open to. She looked at, because all this while looked like a mystery tree, okay? But then when the devil spoke to her, she looked at this tree and realized that, come on, this is like every other tree. Why? Because there was nothing in that tree. There was no mystery about that tree. The only mystery about that tree is the command that was attached to it. And the truth is, it wasn't that tree. The tree had no power to give them life. But because God has set an ordinance that the day man eats of this tree is the day he's going to bless man with the knowledge of good and evil. So it was not the tree that will make man no good and evil, no. But the eating of that tree, the day God will grant man permission to eat that tree is the day God have set, haven't trained man, God have said that now man, you are qualified to be anointed with the knowledge of good and evil. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now that was the temptation of Lucifer. So I said, but when they ate the tree, their eyes opened. No, their eyes did not open. Lu Lucifer only made them to understand something that was outside of God's will. So instead of God to anoint them to know good and evil, Lucifer began to give them a counterfeit knowledge of good and evil. That's what happened. Okay, so there was this other tree that was the tree of life. And God had to block the way to the tree of life. Not because God was afraid. Remember, God has already ordained that the day they eat of that tree, is the day he's coming to bless them. So the angels that participate in that blessing, they have already been given their command. 
It, there are things you're going to do in the next 10 years, in 10 years' time. The angels that will assist you to do those things, they've already received the instructions. They are waiting for you. 10 years, you're waiting for you. You see, that's why I always teach people it's important to be led by the Spirit of God. We are not here alone in this world. We're not here to run our own programs. There are angels. What did David say? He has given. He has. Angels have been given command concerning us. They have charged. They've received commands concerning you. And their job is to see to it that nothing happens to you. When you walk accordingly. The bad things that happen to believers is when they are not led by the Spirit. So the moment you're not led by the Spirit, you walk um, you walk away from where there's angelic protection for you. And truth is, angels will not chase you to protect you. So the job of Jesus from the beginning was to come and administer life to man. So if Adam had obeyed God, number one, there would have been that ceremony of eating of that tree, knowledge of good and evil. Then they go further, Jesus, now this was going to be the manifestation of Jesus. And Jesus wouldn't have to be born of a virgin, grow up. No, it would have, he would have just come like he was, like Melchizedek came. He would have come to man and said, now receive, it's time for you to receive life. It is that receiving of life that would have ushered man into eternal life. Are you following what I'm saying? That was the original ministry of Jesus. But now because of man's sin, God had to add to the ministry of Jesus, which is what? Dying. So the word of God was not just made flesh like, you know, um, a full human being, which God could have done. But this time, that's why John said he dwelt among us. This was the first time the word was made flesh and made to dwell among us. So they knew his birth, but now we all know that he was not born. But you know what I mean by that? God did not take the sperm of, jo uh, of, of uh, Joseph. You see, the word was formed in Mary's womb. Now that's the wonders of God. The word was formed in Mary's womb and she, was, she gave birth to Jesus. He grew up. Now he had to take the nature of sin on himself. All those are added um, assignment to Jesus. And guess what? Jesus did not fulfill his assignment. He died. God raised him from the dead. But guess what? He did not fulfill the assignment. That's, that's what I wanted to get. He did not fulfill the assignment while he walked on this earth. He didn't. When, to fulfill the assignment, he had to come the way he would have come before. Now that's why I tell people, this is the reason when Jesus rose from there, nobody could recognize him anymore. Nobody could recognize, not because he was dodging from people. No, because this is him, the word of God made flesh. What does that mean? He, he takes any form. He can take any form. Now I don't mean he take the form of an animal. No, that's not. He will take any human form. The same way Melchizedek appeared. That's how Jesus began to appear when he resurrected from the dead. So the disciples will see him and they, they'll be wondering, is he the one or... <laughs> this is his disciples that walked with him for three and a half years. Okay, is he the one or... Uh, oh, he's the one, yeah. See, it was the hearing of his voice that they know him. When they hear his voice, they know him. The same way Abraham recognized Melchizedek by hearing his voice because he, he speaks I come in Navala. <laughs> oh this is beautiful the, the way he speaks he doesn't speak timid he doesn't speak hey, hey, hello guys do you have any do you have any food here no he just met this man and said, blessed be Abraham of the most high God possess of the heaven and earth Who's this man that speaks with so much authority? You remember those disciples on the way to Emmaus? They said, didn't our hearts burn us while he spoke on the way? Because he was speaking with so much authority. Not because he was shouting, hey, don't you know that Jesus? No, 
he, he speaks with so much certainty and authority. And they will look at him like, ah, ah we know this person, you know, ah, but no, he's not the one. They'll look at this person, nah, he's not the one. Until Jesus broke bread, say, ah, he's, he's the one. No other person does this. is after his resurrection he gave a command to the disciples don't go anywhere wait i'm coming back to you you see because he gave them that that was the last instruction they received from him i know they almost they almost foiled that when peter came up and said i'm going back to fishing oh i go with you jesus had to show up again i said what's wrong with you guys peter hey Feed my sheep and gave him instructions gather the people and wait and peter gathered the people and they were waiting and waiting and waiting and on the day of pentecost he came with life so they were the ones the disciples in acts chapter 2 were the first to be made spirit beings did you learn anything today praise <laughs> god because my time is up we're not done yet. We're going to continue on this on Monday. I pray the Lord. Listen, go check these things. Go before the Lord. I don't say go carry your Bible and carry Greek and Hebrew. No, no, no. You can carry Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic and still get nothing. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your understanding. Now, I've given you leverage. So, ask the, I always tell people, you can even start by saying, Holy Spirit, I don't believe what this pastor is saying. Help me prove him wrong. That's a good place to start. Praise <laughs> God. And I trust the Holy Spirit. If He is in you, you will come back with deeper knowledge, even beyond what I have shared. Father, I bless you today. Take your word and sow it in the hearts of everyone. Your wisdom flows through our hearts. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever.